Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to today's World of Warships video where we're going to be showcasing a ranked battle in the Des Moines for our Intermediate Player Guide series. And being the anchor is what I'm uh, going to call this. As you can see, we take off rather quickly because we have built into uh, the unique uh, enhanced propulsion plant. So uh, for the six slots, so we're very fast. Um, but this ranked battle actually took place just over a year ago. And I've held on to this video for quite some time because I knew one day I wanted to feature it. And I finally decided that today should be the day we go ahead and feature this battle. Um, and you'll probably understand a little bit more by what I mean when I say and being the anchor for your team per se. In particular with how the Des Moines uh, or even the Salem uh, recently featured on the channel uh, work as ships as well as a couple others could play this role really well. Probably like Petropavlovsk, uh, Moskva uh, even as well. Um, so you'll see what uh, I mean when we get into it um, and as you see how the enemy team positions. So here in domination mode we have you know the three caps. Uh, you can see it's uh, seven versus seven. There's only one destroyer on each team. Uh, three cruisers, three battleships. Uh, so, um, we're moving up here, and when I play and spawn kind of on this side, uh, I really like to um, cozy in here uh, behind uh, the cap at A, uh, because it provides good radar coverage, even of the center of the map, as an example. Um, but it makes the most use of my radar, um, as well as the hydroacoustic search to pick up any torpedoes that might be coming into A from an enemy destroyer, or cruiser, battleship, uh, or even up along uh, the four lines. So we have this Hindenburg here, so we're going to be cheeky. We're going to get a, a two shots off here on him as we go in behind cover. I'm still spotted, um, so that tells me there's someone out in the mid, and now we've gone dark. So there's someone uh, mid, maybe just south of the island, and I'm actually going to ping the map. This is before you could actually have the exact spot on the mini map, and uh, sure enough, it's the uh, Elbing. Um, so I communicate to my team, we're still lit up there, and of course now by the time I uh, typed that, they saw indeed that it's the l -bing. So we're gonna flip the cap, since we don't have a destroyer on our flank to do that job, it is uh, another reason why I take this position, it's my job to come in here and do this. So we already see that there's four enemy ships uh, down at B, we know there's one at C, so there's still two more that we need to account for. So. I popped radar early. I'm trying to get a little bit of information as I nose up here. I don't want to go too far forward because our propulsion, if we use full power, will definitely sling us out past the islands here. So I tell the GK, let's just defend here. Because um, right now it's just really me and him um, with four of our teammates being up at sea. So there's really no need for us to play aggressively here. I do get spotted, but we're already reversing. Uh, we're gonna go dark now, so that tells me there's no one wide, there's no one down on the three line, uh, per se, as an example. Um, our GK, he's communicated, yes, uh, let's just defend here, and he's going to uh, turn out. So now we've spotted five enemy ships uh, here at uh, Bravo, so definitely I'm going to play uh, distance. Um, he's talked about defend A only, and he's gonna do it from a distance. I don't know if that's him or the Napoli. Uh, so that's a fantastic um, maneuver on him, especially him being in GK. You mean rather large, uh, easy to become a damage sponge. So he's doing what he can to disengage and kind of weigh right now. Then we have the Schlieffen. So I can still sit here because he's providing the spotting for me. Uh, Des Moines takes out uh, the enemy Napoli, or enemy, enemy Elbing, excuse me. But the Schlieffen's going broadside. So now we get to make some really good use of our uh, AP here as I want to keep reversing. Um, try to prevent um, try to have more of a one-on-one -on -one engagement here as much as possible but we definitely want to punish this Schlieffen as he continues to push up so the goal for us now is to hold on long enough for our team from C uh, to come down and support us at Alpha so the longer we can hold the enemy team up here the better uh, the friendly Napoli has also uh, disengaged he's turning away which is great our team's pinging that they think there's someone else in the mid near C, so we'll see what happens there, because we're still missing the uh, enemy Wooster. We haven't spotted him yet. Enemy 
Um, so the Schlieffen, because we're sitting here in this position, he's kind of keep nosing up. I'm preventing them from uh, going out wide here, per se. Um, you can see even on the health bar that our GK in Napoli is now beneath half health. Uh, they've taken a lot of heat because there's five enemy ships here uh, focusing them. So they have to go wide um, and they have to open up the distance. So they're doing what they need to do. Um, given the circumstance and given the situation. Now I'm concerned about where this Wooster is at. Um, the Schlieffen has us on Hydro. Um, so I'm really interested to see if I back up too far, will I start getting shot at or will I not? So um, at this point, it's too late for me to just simply turn out um, and go to the right um, and show on my broadside just to try to run away from this enemy push. I have to be the anchor now. Um, and Des Moines does really well in this situation. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm delaying the enemy team from pushing into A at the expense of, I know that this can cost me my life, okay? So we spotted the enemy Wooster and I'm gonna go ahead and already get my guns turned. I'm using free look, um, cause I want this Wooster to be down as soon as possible. I light up my radar, letting the enemy team know that, hey, I see you. I know that you're probably trying to come around the island. So I'm trying to use it as a, a maneuver for them to not push until I deal with this Wooster. And we do kill the Wooster, which is great. So that puts us up to 90,000 damage. And we're gonna turn our attention back to going forward. So I'm concerned if I go too far out here in reverse, there might be an enemy ship that decides to push up the four line on the left side of this island. Uh, when really I want to keep them more or less coming on the uh, side of the island here. So Ohio takes a shot at us, so we're going to instantly start reversing. And we take a good amount of damage there, but not really enough to perhaps warrant using our heal. And you can see that there's about a 2,000 hit point difference. Um, so I don't feel like it's uh, wise enough to use the heal right now. Uh, so what I want to do here is I want to nose up more in on this island. Um, I want to get marry the island. I want to get closer to it. That's kind of how you play the Des Moines. Uh, you want to be really close to the islands. So now I'm going to just start punishing the Ohio, even though he has this 40 second cooldown on his uh, repair party. Uh, I want to start. I keep putting pressure on him because I know he can tank a lot of damage. You can see our team responded really well. They're not just simply coming back to the R spawn. Uh, but they are going on down to 6-7 line, um, and so they're able to put pressure into the team and punish them for pushing into A because that's the round around the corner. And now I have to use the heal. So at this point, I know I'm going to die. Uh, it's very hard to take 457 millimeter shells from the enemy Ohio. So I'm just going to have to do what I can in this situation. I'm being the anchor. I'm punishing them by remaining here where our GK and Napoli are firing from a distance, which is good for them. Um, they've taken a lot of heat, and so now it's kind of my turn to take the heat. I keep looking over my shoulder to the left to see that Schlieffen is moving up. I'm being targeted by two ships, so it's likely that he's targeting me, so I'm just going to simply ease back forward. It's possible if I were to use that heal earlier, I would have already had the next heal up by now, so a little bit of mismanaging. Uh, with the repair party perhaps in this situation, but we do pick up the wither on the Ohio and We're just not gonna leave this position again. We're gonna be the anchor. We're gonna delay the enemy team from taking Bravo We're gonna give our team uh, time to respond time to react um, To set up here uh, as they're about to take out the enemy Petropavlovsk um, The Ohio is low so I'm gonna encourage my team to try to focus him down before he gets his next steal off because um, you can see they're focusing the Hanover instead. That's a mistake on their part. They really need to be focusing on the Ohio um, because of that short repair party. So just focus the low health targets, the low health battleship, um, and then they can switch to the Hanover once they've dealt with the Ohio. You can see our team's continuing to push in on them. Our gearing's already pushing into Bravo. Hindenburg has ran off apparently. Um, he wasn't uh, happy with what was happening here, so he kind of leaves some of his teammates out to dry. Um, so a lot of times, I know as being a player in World Warships, you want to live, you want to survive, uh, you want to be able to um, I enjoy the whole battle. Um, and when you're playing a game like this, you know, um, you just want to live. Because <laughs> if you're not alive, then you kind of see it maybe as a loss sometimes. But in this type of situation, um, 
it's a sacrifice. It's a necessary sacrifice in being the anchor for uh, my team to give them the time to respond and just taking the play, taking the game, uh, the choice that, yes, I'm going to die, but I'm going to do what I can for my team. So I made the team play. I didn't make the selfish play for self, but I made the team play in helping their odds of winning, um, improving their chances of this being a victory for our team and a defeat for the enemy team. Um, so now they've taken down the enemy Ohio. And actually, you can see that uh, enemy Petro Pavlos was super low. I think he was like 1,000 hit points earlier. Um, and now he's all the way back up to 9,000. He's a bit of a tank, but he's showing a lot of broadside to the Ghost of Grover, So he's going to be punished for that. So our team does a really well job. And now it's just 30 seconds away from winning as the Hindenburg is still down on the eye line, hiding behind the island. Um, now, this is the reason why I put this in the Intermediate Player Guide series is it's not really, I think, something that comes natural, especially for myself when I was a beginner player in World of Warships. Um, because often you want to play for survival, you want to live, right? You want to live through the entire battle. Um, but in recognizing the situation that we had here, it's kind of like understanding that it was too late for me to run away with how much pressure the enemy team was putting on us and coming around the island. So I just chose to be the anchor um, and helping fight for the cap, delay the enemy team, so then that our team from C can respond and come down. So um, in this uh, ranked match, we made it to uh, down to star three. And 163,000 damage in a ranked one. It's only seven versus seven is really good. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, so we get the high caliber, we get the witherer, uh, seven fires, 170 shell hits. Um, and this was an older build that I had with Des Moines. So it wasn't like the top grade gunner where I was getting a buff uh, for the fact that they are within my standard detectability range. This is when I was running heavy AP shells on Des Moines. And we're going to take tech second place for 2000 base XP. Uh, our allied Des Moines did really well. He got two, so we gave him a compliment. He took care of the L being in someone else. And here you can see uh, potential damage, which is over a million. I mean, <laughs> the 457 millimeter shells in the Ohio, which we did 72,000 damage to, is just going to keep cutting through that us. So there's only so much we can do in that situation. Uh, and this is ending with 307,000 credits. So uh, being the anchor for your team is not always the glorious option, but it's definitely a team play when you're in a situation like this. Uh, when you can't disengage and you can't run away. I see a lot of Des, uh, Des Moines players, as well as maybe something like a Mosque of Salem, um, maybe even a Minotaur, who they're scared of the enemy push, and it's just too late for them to disengage. So then when they pull out broadside like that, if I would have done that uh, into the cap and where three or four battleships, or three battleships and a cruiser would have had a shot on me, uh, I just would have instantly died and paid for it and not been able to punish the enemy team as much as I was um, and making them pay for pushing around. So um, keep that strategy in mind um, as a heavy cruiser player. I mean, sometimes you might find yourself in that situation even in a battleship, um, it's a bit harder to do. So the GK and the Napoli did there was really good um, and just kiting away like that rather than just deciding to stay and fight because they would have died if they would have done that. So learn from them as well and how our team responded here in this battle. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you have subscribed, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.